Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Gurpreet Singh. I'm a senior product manager at Noage Networks, Nokia. Uh, my focus is on SD WAN. Again, subcategories there QoS, application aware routing, NUH, which is a network utility host, and that will be the center of the topic today, uh, and announce and monitoring. So, in the past, uh, I have also done some uh, standardization work at Etsy NFE and OP NFE for operationalizing the NFE deployments. Uh, hello, everyone. My, I am Patrick. Um, I'm a software architect at Nokia. I've been uh, with the company for five years now. Um, I've uh, created the architecture of the uh, Nuage Utility Host, which is the, the software that is uh, that we're going to be talking about during this uh, presentation. Um, and uh, I was responsible for comparing HA Proxy with other software uh, and the process of choosing the right proxy server in our application. Um, I've been engaged in the open source community for uh, a long time now. Um, I've been contributing by um, uh, sharing uh, personal projects uh, on, on, well, old platforms now. It's uh, GitHub that is uh, dominating. Um, and, uh, of course, by uh, submitting PRs to existing projects. All right. Thank you, Patrick. Uh, so uh, today we'll talk about, you know, how Edge Proxy is instrumental in operationalizing the SD-WAN deployment. So first, we'll go through uh, the various SD-WAN solution components on SD-WAN and uh, the associated requirements uh, for connectivity across these components as well. And uh, also how HA proxy acts as a key enabler uh, to satisfy those requirements. So subsequently, uh, Patrick will uh, talk about uh, the next level of details on how HA proxy is used in the Nuage SD-WAN solution and what new features in HA proxy can help enable additional capabilities in the SD-WAN deployment. And uh, uh, last not the least, but uh, we, Patrick will also go through a product demo, uh, which is our Nuage utility, utility host, uh, where Etsy proxy is the core component. Okay. So when we talk about SD-WAN solution or the SD-WAN deployment, uh, uh, some things come to our mind is what is SD-WAN? What is SD, right? It's a, it follows the core principles of SDN, software defined networking. And one of the core principles for SDN is control plane and user plane separation, right? So, so unlike the old days when we had network entities or network devices where control and the data plane was all embedded in the uh, you know, uh, network entities, network devices, uh, they were distributed all over the place, then what SD-WAN does is it takes the control plane from the individual network endpoints or network entities, uh, place, place it in a centralized location. And there are, again, advantages to that. I won't go too much in detail on the SD-WAN side, but one of the principles which I mentioned to you is a separation of control plane and user plane. That's uh, commonly known as CUPS. So SD-WAN, adds an additional component there, which is a policy management component. So when we're talking about SD-WAN, uh, the user wants to be able to specify policies, whether those policies are related to security or performance, QoS, or maybe just path selection for, for some reasons let's say they, they want a certain type of traffic to take a particular WAN connection, whether it's internet, whether it's MPLS uh, network as a WAN connection, right? So all these components, they need to interact with each other. 
when we are talking about branch endpoints, we're talking about the policy manager, we're talking about the controller, the backend services. And they access services from all these different endpoints or the backend services as well. So the communication across these components, accessing of the services, that needs to happen in a highly secure and high availability manner. That's why the security and high availability becomes paramount. And then load balancing, sure, it's definitely required, but it needs to happen at the right, uh, I, I would say at the right scale and the performance, which is required for SD-WAN deployment. Now, when you have all these entities, some of them distributed branch endpoints, some of them centralized and all these things, you want to have visibility of what is happening across these different SD-WAN solution components, right? So, so the branch endpoints are not just generating control plane and management traffic. They are actually also generating uh, traffic for uh, you know, statistics, monitoring data, um, providing uh, you know, communication to uh, web filtering services and several other services. So, so when you have all these different components, there are multiple points of failure and we want visibility into this network so we can identify, we can do the root cause analysis. What is the root cause for service health degradation? What is the root cause for service health, service availability? Right, so troubleshooting and visibility uh, becomes a key component here. So, um, if you look at these SD-WAN solution components, we talked about the management components, policy manager, backend services, branch endpoints. Now, there is a need for this intermediate entity, or you can say the utility host which can provide all these services. And that's where HA proxy comes into picture. So HA proxy forms a core component of the utility host, uh, which provides uh, you know, connectivity uh, proxy uh, services to all the web filtering, upgrade services, test services, load balancing, high availability. And also, you know, lifecycle management of the branch endpoints upgrade of the software. So, so all these things uh, need to be provided by the utility functions for SD-WAN employment and Apache proxy plays a complete, or I would say a critical role here uh, to provide these services and capabilities. Now, security load balancing, high availability and visibility, they form the four key pillars for the requirements that SD-WAN imposes on the intermediate entity or the utility host, which we have referred to earlier, right? In the security arena, we have certificate authentication. So all these components need to be able to talk to each other using security authentication. Uh, some of the network interfaces on the utility host they are exposed uh, to you know, application layer TDOS. So there needs to be protection against application layer TDOS. SSL termination, TLS encryption are inherent requirements there. And uh, you know, uh, any component or any solution such as SE proxy need to support this. Uh, on the load balancing side, like I mentioned earlier, the load balancing, sure, we, we want to increase the capacity. We want to provide that redundancy using the load balancing, but it needs to happen at high performance and high scale. And a little bit more, I'll talk a little bit more on this uh, later in my presentation, but uh, on the high availability side, uh, the two key features uh, which the new Arch utility host is using uh, are VRRP and hitless reload. And VRRP again here, uh, 
uh, provides the active, passive, high availability deployment scenario, hitless reload, um, no loss of connections when there is a software upgrade uh, for uh, the edge proxy or there is a configuration reload, right? So th that's important. We, we don't want to have discontinuity in the service availability. Monitoring of service health, monitoring of service performance, providing detailed logs, health checks for the backend services. These are some of the things which HA Proxy provides, right? And which we can we are leveraging in our product uh, to troubleshoot and understanding uh, the performance of the uh, service health and. Uh, this is uh, paramount. You know, some of this information can be uh, used for uh, capacity planning as well. When we are uh, planning the capacity, how much resources to allocate to the utility host and things like that. Okay, so we we talked about you know load balancing. We talked about load balancing needs to be done at high session scale high performance. So, so let's dig, dig a little bit deeper into that. So when it comes to session scale and performance for SD-WAN, uh, the utility host needs about uh, six to seven sessions per branch endpoint, right? Uh, which in turn translates uh, to HA proxy requirements for session scale two sessions for uh, service and system stats, one for web filter server, one for upgrade, syslog, test services, right? So in all in all, we have about six to seven sessions for each branch endpoint. And in a typical um, SD-WAN deployment, we could have all the way up to 10,000 branch endpoints. Uh, that in turn translates to uh, 60,000 sessions for each HA proxy instance. Uh, as we know that HA proxy currently supports uh, 8,000 concurrent TLS sessions uh, per GP of RAM. So with vertical scaling, uh, we could get to 60K sessions satisfying the requirements for the SD-WAN scale. On the performance side, there are three traffic types, uh, which are the key culprits or the bandwidth hogs uh, for from a new edge perspective or the utility host perspective. So statistics traffic, uh, which is again, uh, traffic for statistics going from the various endpoints uh, to uh, the centralized components. And then we have the uh, software upgrade traffic and uh, the test services traffic. So a combination of these three traffic categories, in addition to the control and management traffic, which the utility host has to handle, uh, we believe that a one gig TLS traffic should fit the bill. And uh, HA proxy currently supports uh, more than that uh, for, uh, as far as the TLS traffic is concerned. So we believe that from scale and performance point of view, uh, NJ Proxy definitely has support uh, for supporting the required scale as well as the performance, right? So one thing which I have wanted to note is that uh, when we are talking about performance, uh, it's possible that you know, uh, software upgrades, too many software upgrades happening at the same time, or uh, too many concurrent test services happening at the same time uh, could starve uh, the control plane traffic. So, so that is definitely not desirable. So we need to have some sort of priority scheduling so that, uh, you know, uh, the control plane traffic gets a higher priority and we can throttle some of the traffic on the software upgrade and test services. So, I want to talk a little bit more about the uh, visibility or the monitoring solution uh, applicable to the utility host. So in a typical monitoring solution, you have a monitoring layer where it's a monitoring database collector, which collects all the you know, metrics, 
service health statistics uh, from the different entities. And then you have the analytics engine, uh, which uh, operates on all the metrics and the uh, monitoring data, which has been collecting to provide uh, actionable intelligence uh, to the operator. On the utility host side, uh, we have two entities, which is monitoring agent, which provides the resource usage monitoring, whether it's a CPU utilization, memory utilization, as well as uh, you know, disk IO utilization uh, for the utility host itself. And then HA proxy is providing uh, the service scale, the service health uh, data to the monitoring layer. So combination of all these monitoring data uh, we can have a good idea on what's happening in the system. Uh, we have visibility, we have the ability to troubleshoot any issues uh, which uh, arise. Okay. Uh, in addition to troubleshooting and debugging capability and service health, I believe that uh, the information, the monitoring information can also be used for uh, capacity planning Okay, so with that, uh, I would like to hand over the control to Patrick, who will go over the solution architecture for utility host and uh, some of the associated use cases where HA proxy is used as a core component. Uh, thank you, Gurpreet. So uh, the Nuage utility host is the entry door on the internet for, for all the Nuage infrastructure components that, that reside in a typical deployment. Um, HA proxy is used as the core com component for uh, to enable secure communication to the, these different uh, servers in uh, the infrastructure. So, uh, as we can see from this uh, this diagram, we have uh, the, the utility host that that sits in the, the middle of the of the design, and we've got an external network and an internal network. The internal network is is uh, what it says. So it's the it's what's internal to our infrastructure, and then the external network is uh, one of the WAN links, um, like the internet. And we have branch endpoints that sit uh, on these external networks that need to communicate to these servers on the internal network. So HA proxy is used as a well to proxy this traffic. Um, one of these servers is the configuration server. So this is the uh, the SDN um, configuration, or we could call it the, the the SDN policy engine. Um, this is what this is the server that sends the configuration updates to the uh, the branch endpoints. Um, it's important that this traffic uh, to to these servers be load balanced because we we want uh, to limit the 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 amount of interruption that that there can be. So. We want to guarantee a high availability for uh, for this service, um, and uh, security is uh, ensured by uh, having TLS traffic and having a client certificate encryption, so that um, not everyone can just start talking to this server. So only approved branch endpoints can can get the information from there. And then we have the stat uh, the stats collectors that we call them. Um, those are uh, statistics. Uh, collection servers that will collect um, information about the usage of branch endpoint. Um, we can have many of those servers, uh, so proper load balancing is, is required for this to make sure we distribute the load um, equally among the pool of servers that we have. Um, and to avoid having, uh, well, to prevent having rogue devices send bogus traffic to those uh, statistics collectors, uh, we do client, certif uh, client certificate validation uh, so that only the branch, the Nuage branch endpoints can send traffic to those, uh, those servers through HA proxy. Um, the firmware repos are uh, basically just plain HTTP servers that, that will be used for uh, serving uh, firmware upgrades for the uh, the branch endpoint. So um, this will require a lot of bandwidth and then performance is really something that, that we're looking for um, in the utility host for this, uh, this server. Because if 
if we have um, thousands of branch endpoints that starts downloading uh, firmware upgrades, then we really need the performance of the utility host to be on par with uh, that demand. Um, and one of the, so the last uh, box that we can see here, the web filter policy is, uh, uh, this is a pool of servers that we use for um, establishing policies for uh, browsing or whatever web traffic that the branch endpoint uh, would be uh, trying to access. So if, if customers behind one of the branch endpoints want to reach a site that, that should be blocked, then it would reach to that, uh, that, that web filter policy server to get uh, a database, a list of, of valid URLs that it can access or that it should be denied of using. Um, this pool can also have many different, uh, like maybe 10 different servers or 100, there's no limit on the number. So proper load balancing is, is, uh, is, is used to uh, make sure that the, the whole pool is being used uh, equally. Um, using uh, the, the whatever um, rules that we've configured. And uh, in a deployment, the branch endpoints, um, they need to uh, first uh, be activated. So when, when we ship a branch endpoint device uh, to one of our customers, it, it's, it's usually uh, a blank device that, that can't be used uh, anywhere. Uh, so they first need to activate it, and to activate it, they need to use a, um, a, a there's a sequence, there's an email they get with a URL that, that they need to access. And then there's, uh, there's this whole procedure to um, obtain a certificate from the SD, SDN config server to make sure that the uh, branch endpoint can start communicating with uh, the, the infrastructure. So. Upon activation, um, well, as you can see, the proxy sits in the middle. Uh, this is the Nuage utility host, and the SDN config server is on our infrastructure side. Um, so at first, when the branch endpoint starts to, uh, it, when it sends an activation request, uh, the client certificate is checked against the factory um, certificate authority. So there is a factory baked in certificate in the, in the branch endpoint that, that is used. And once this is validated, it, it, the request to activate is sent to the SDN config server. And then a new certificate is generated and sent to the branch endpoint. And then using that new certificate, uh, it can start doing configuration requests and configuration uh, configuring itself uh, to be communicating with uh, the infrastructure. And um, using that client certificate allows us also to use a CRL. So if we want to uh, ban one of these branch endpoints or deactivate it, we can always revoke the certificate and, and then uh, the proxy server will recognize that this, this uh, uh, certificate is revoked. So no communication will be allowed to the SDN configuration server anymore. One of the most important uh, aspect of our deployments is the use of uh, namespaces, of network namespaces. Um, in a typical deployment, uh, the, uh, we have uh, many different external networks. So uh, in this diagram I'm showing, for example, there are two MPLS networks and uh, there are, there's the external network here that could be just the plain internet and the internal network that that is the, uh, where the Nuage infrastructure resides. Um, one of the very important thing that we're leveraging in HAProxy is the use of uh, namespace support. So um, in Linux, when we configure uh, these different network interfaces, we place them in different network namespaces. So HAProxy needs to be listening, uh, it needs to have one leg in each of uh, those, uh, those network namespaces because each of them could have overlapping address space. Uh, for example, they're not only overlapping, but they could be identical. Those two MPLS network could have the, an identical um, IP address scheme. So uh, we need to, so to, to make things more simple in Linux, we place them in the, the networking uh, uh, namespace and then then we can have front, different front ends inside of uh, HAProxy that sits in different namespaces. 
all the backend servers uh, in the HAProxy configuration, they reside on the internal network and we call it the internal namespace uh, in Linux. That's where we place the network interface that accesses the backend servers. Uh, so each front end is then bound to one and only one external network. So we can see here the branch endpoints that are attached to different external networks and one, one of the branch endpoint, um, it, it's uh, connected to two external networks, so for redundancy, for example. And uh, of course, when we have a solution like this, we need to have, uh, we need to be able to guarantee high availability to our customers. Um, to do this, we're deploying the utility host as a pair of servers uh, that are both active-active and we're sh sharing a VIP so a virtual IP address between the both of them. And uh, each branch endpoint would access the pair of server through the VIP. And this is done with, uh, with, with VRP. And uh, the uh, HA Proxy Enterprise uh, Edition ships with a modified version of Keep Alive D. Uh, this is what we're using uh, to, uh, to make this happen. So we're configuring a Keep Alive D server to sit in every different namespaces and have a VIP in each namespaces or each network, each external networks. So then the branch endpoint can have this communication established uh, as we see here. And um, a security, a good security aspect uh, to elaborate a little bit more on uh, what we've discussed uh, before. Um, uh, of HA proxy is uh, the use of a uh, of TLS termination and uh, the client certificate. As we can see here, these are the uh, the different communication paths that, that can happen when we uh, we activate the branch endpoint, and um, we what we call when the activation we call it the bootstrap, and this is what we're seeing here: the branch endpoint going to HA proxy and uh, doing the activation. So there's the boot, the pre bootstrap certificate that we're using. And then there's a post bootstrap, uh, as I've mentioned earlier. Uh, we're using different CAs um, to uh, validate those certificates. And these are all things that we can configure in the front ends of HAProxy. We can then configure different uh, certificates in the back ends to communicate with the policy manager. And uh, so it, 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 HAProxy can then be used as a, I like to call it a back to back. Uh, TLS uh, proxy. So you, you've got the uh, TLS termination on the front end, but you're re-establishing the TLS communication on the back end also, as we can see here. Um, and then, uh, so we can see the open flow TLS communication here, but this is not going through the proxy. Um, what's really important to understand is those uh, four arrows that we see here. Um, another big thing that uh, people have been asking a lot uh, from us is uh, UDP support for the, the, the proxy. So currently, uh, the three things that we want to support is uh, NTP, DNS, and syslog. Uh, right now, the uh, Nuage utility host does support proxying of uh, DNS and NTP, but not syslog. But we're not using HA proxy to do those. Um, for NTP and DNS, what we're doing is we're, uh, we, we're just launching um, an instance of an NTPD server and uh, the, an instance of the bind server, the DNS server, and we're forwarding to a, another, an upstream server, which is probably the right way to do it, but it would be nice if we could leverage HA proxy to make the whole configuration of everything inside uh, the Nuage utility hub utility hosts use the same process of going through HA proxy to uh, to you know proxy that traffic so syslog is one of those things that we don't do right now because uh, we're waiting for um, support from HA proxy which I believe came out in uh, one of the latest version in the 2.x series uh, so this is something that we're considering in the future so one of the big thing that we want to have support for also is uh, support for MTCRL files. So right now, um, the way it works uh, for supporting the, uh, the certificate revocation list 
uh, we build a HA proxy configuration that that is defined with a, a CRL in the, the front end config. And it, but that CRL, we get it from a different server to a, a cron job. So if there's some kind of a glitch or a race condition where we, we start HA proxy, but that CRL was not fetched yet, then HA proxy is not happy and it won't, it won't start. So one of the things that would be nice to have would be if HA proxy could read, read the config and detect that one of the front end is configured with a CRL, I would check if the CRL exists. If it doesn't exist, then just leave the front end down, but you know, HA proxy would, would still be up. Uh, and then it could periodically check again if the CRL becomes uh, existent and, and then bring the front end up once that happens. Same thing if uh, the CRL exists, but it's empty. Uh, it would be nice if the, the front end could be loaded, um, but uh, you know, there's just, you treat it as, the, as if the certificate revocation list was empty. Uh, there's not gonna be a signature in it. Uh, it could cause a security risk there uh, but it's all things to uh, to think about. As long as the HA proxy uh, server, the load balancer server would come up successfully uh, with just you know the, the rest of the front ends to be uh, up, that would be uh, good for us. I'm gonna show you what the uh, the Nuraj utility host is and how it's built. So we've got a a um, a GUI for the Nuraj utility host that we can see here in my, my browser. I'm not gonna go through the, uh, the, the GUI because that's not what, what we wanna show. Uh, I really wanna show you what, what the internal does. Um, so I was talking about uh, the, uh, the um, internal, uh, well, the, the network namespaces that we're using. So in this window here in the bottom, I have uh, one instance of the utility host, and this one is the second. So as, as I've described earlier there, it's a pair of servers that is being uh, deployed. So if I do this uh, IP net NS, I, I can see that they both have the same uh, network namespaces that are uh, being um, uh, defined. So the internal network namespaces is where the backends uh, uh, are uh, defined, and then those namespaces are uh, WAN uh, interfaces. So this is on a test setup. So we have four here. Uh, management is considered of, a one, of a, like a WAN uh, namespace also. And in each of them, I, I, I have, uh, for example, internal IPA, I have my own, oops, sorry, internal. I have my um, net NS exec. Yeah, I have my IP address defined here and they could be overlapping. So I can see ETH5 is placed in that uh, namespace. Uh, same thing for uh, this other server. Of course, I'm gonna have a different IP because this is the peer server. Uh, this one is dot 51 and this one is dot 50. I'm gonna show you the uh, HA proxy configuration for these for this setup. So if I go in uh, OTP proxy, So we can see here, um, I've got, so for example, uh, for the, uh, the, the, um, the bootstrapping that I was talking about, which is using the, uh, the client certificate, uh, this is one of those configurations. So I have my front end here um, that uses uh, the, uh, the, 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 a certificate for um, the client validation. And I've got the CA file here to validate that uh, this, this, the client certificate is really signed by who we think it is, by our infrastructure, basically. And the nice thing in HA proxy right now is that we can specify this namespace keyword so that front end is, is bound not only to an interface ETH1 in this example, but it, it's binding to that interface within that namespace because that interface has been placed in that namespace. Uh, so this allows us to have one configuration file with many different namespaces instead of having several, uh, different HA proxy instances sitting in different namespaces. Um, I, I have here uh, one example that does have the, uh, the, the CRL in place. This is what I was talking about. Uh, the CRL could be empty sometimes. So 
uh, this is causing problems uh, for us. Uh, we'd like it if we could, you know, if that file was in existence, uh, it could continue to work anyway. Uh, so this is this is for the for the front end, and then if um, it, in the back end we do have. Uh, so I'm going to go in this back end here. So this back end here is bound to another namespace that we can see here. So we've got three servers. We're doing the, the load balancing across these and we're doing the SSL termination on the front end. And we're again doing the SSL termination, well, not termination, but connection on the, on the back end also uh, to this pool of three servers. Uh, and as you can see here in this command here, we can define another namespace, which is different than the namespace we had above. So we can have uh, the, the front ends and, and back ends sit in different namespaces. So that's, that's pretty, pretty cool for us. It, uh, it does exactly what we need it to do. So that's for, um, you know, I'm not going to go through the entire uh, HAProxy configuration. I just wanted to show you how the namespaces are used and the client certificates validation is done. I can show you how the, uh, the VRP uh, configuration is done. So this is done with uh, Keep Alive. So uh, for example, so one, one of the things um, that we don't have right now with Keep Alive D is, uh, so there's a newer version of, of, of Keep Alive D that does support sitting in many different uh, namespaces, but in, in, in this version uh, that we have, uh, this is not possible. So we have to define one configuration file per namespace. So as you can see here, I have uh, one, of those configuration file per network namespaces that I've defined. So if I go at the management one, for example, I define my uh, virtual IP address here, and uh, you know it's just a standard basic uh, VRP uh, configuration, um, and with the interface name here. So uh, the, and, and then when we launch that service, we kind of wrapped it in a systemd um, service that will launch multiple instances of those. So we can see here um, status, we call it proxy VRP. We can see here we've spawned many different uh, instances uh, within that service. So one for each. So th there's two pro process that, that are being launched because that's the master process that spins another one. But uh, in, in our point of view, we're spinning one per different namespaces, as we can see here, but we end up with several process running. Um, so that's that's it for uh, the, the VRP here. I, we can see uh, that was in the management. I can go in the IPNet NS. You can see the VRP probably here. So I do see the VRP that's been assigned here. And of course, on the second server, uh, I don't have the VRP, so this this one only has the dot fifty one address, and this one has a dot fifty, and but this one also has a dot two hundred. So if I were to shut down the server, the first one, then the VRP address would bounce the se the second one, and the branch endpoints they wouldn't notice anything. Um, they would they would still continue to use the same address, and they would be able to reach the servers. That would, that's uh, our presentation. I hope uh, everyone liked it. Thank you very much for listening. Yeah, uh, thank you, everyone. I hope that uh, you got to learn how Nuage is using HA Proxy and uh, you know, uh, what kind of uh, additional features we could add to HA Proxy to strengthen uh, the overall solution and uh, overall, I would say, industry adoption for Azure Proxy as well. Thank you. Great, and now we have Gurpreet and Patrick joining us here live. Gentlemen, thank you, much, thank you so much for your talk and for participating in the conference. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you, Dylan. Thank you. Thank you for having us. And it was a great pleasure to, you know, be able to talk about the, uh, aspects or you can say uh, how HA proxy is being used in our SD-WAN deployments, how Nuage is using it. So great. Certainly. So as a reminder to uh, uh, to everyone following along, you can submit questions in the in the chat. You can also submit them on Twitter using hashtag HAProxyConf. 
and we'll try to get to as many questions as we can. So first question I, I have for you guys, uh, what are some of your personal favorite use cases for SD-WAN? Is it connecting IoT devices, maybe connecting remote workers? Really what, what catches your imagination? And I know you spoke a bit about this at the end of the talk, but would love to, would love to hear you elaborate. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, IoT devices is a very interesting use case um, where, you know, uh, mobility is becoming more and more important, of course, uh, whether we are talking about, you know, uh, terminals in the utility vehicles, uh, tracking emissions or in the public utility vehicles or public transportation vehicles, uh, users with smartphones and uh, tablets, right? So, so all of these are associated with mobility, trying to access uh, corporate uh, data, which is again sensitive. Um, so they need to have access to the, those things, uh, those data when they are in the field, right? And so, so the, the challenge there is, of course, there, there is a need to somehow do policy management, not only at the branch level, but at the group of users or at the individual user level, right? So, so, so there are some uh, solutions out there. Uh, and again, you need to figure out whether you want to have your service edge close to the EPC location uh, from the mobile service provider, whether they perform internet breakout uh, for SaaS applications and uh, also providing uh, you know, a large scale support because now we're talking about uh, individual subscribers uh, and doing policy management on those and not just, uh, you know, the branch offices. So very interesting use cases uh, and associated set of challenges there. And um, I would say that Nuage is working on some of those aspects. Um, then outside internet of things, uh, I would like to bring up another use case here is uh, SASE, which a lot of folks on the SD-WAN side have heard about. We're, we're talking about having those secure access uh, functions in the cloud, right? And so key buzzwords associated with those are like, so for example, secure web gateway, uh, CASP, uh, zero trust network access. You know, all, essentially what we're saying is we're talking about um, putting those security functions in the cloud, right? And instead of having it at the branch endpoints completely. And then having a cloud native uh, stack, uh, which is uh, processing those uh, functions as well on the on the cloud side, right? So, so th those are very interesting use cases. They bring their own set of challenges. So, so in context to our presentation today uh, on HA proxy or how the utility host or the Nuance utility host, uh, you know, is built on HA proxy, then, then comes, okay, if we want to move to SASE, then where do we want to deploy the Nuance utility host or the proxy functions, right? Is it in the cloud? If we do want to put it in the cloud, then how does it access the SD-WAN infrastructure components? What are the scale security and the performance challenges associated with it? So those are some of the things which you have to handle or tackle. Uh, so it's the kind of things, you know, uh, we, are, we are looking at it, uh, how we transition to uh, from a SD-WAN vendor uh, to a complete SASE vendor. Uh, so we have some of the SASE functionalities already in place, uh, but, you know, uh, to get into the leadership board on the SASE side also, some other challenges which uh, Nuage as well as uh, uh, our competitors and other vendors have to deal with. Yep. Yeah, and, and on the, along the lines of of the utility host use case, um, you know, you spoke a bit about this in in your talk. But uh, in selecting HA Proxy, was was HA Proxy a natural choice for your team? And and you know, can you speak a bit more about that? Yeah, so I'll, I'll let uh, Patrick comment on that. He, he has in depth knowledge on that side. Sorry. Yeah. So at the beginning, uh, I, I was tasked to evaluate different solutions for uh, the, the proxy aspect of, uh, of our product. Um, and uh, HA Proxy was one of those products that, that I evaluated. And um, uh, it, it, was, it, it became you know, evident that, that HA Proxy was what, what was required for us because of the feature set and also by how lightweight it is in terms of um, you know the footprint 
and uh, it was it's easy to configure. It was easy to to well configure and install and and maintain. So it was uh, it, it was the choice we made by comparing different uh, solutions. I have another question. So another question. you use client. You use client certificates to validate which clients are allowed to connect to the backend services. Can you talk about how easy or not that is to set up HA proxy, um, or sorry, to set up in HA proxy for those who haven't done it? Yeah, uh, actually, it's it's very easy. It's uh, just uh, I think three or four parameters that you need to put in the one of the backend configuration. So uh, uh, what we did is so you need to create the certificate, of course, uh, then. If, so the, the 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 certificate that you put on the client side, you need to have a way of have the client obtain that certificate in a secure way, obviously. So in our case, that certificate is uh, is is um, already baked in the hardware for us, and uh, then for the uh, the the server side certificate uh, to not not the certificate but CA that we validate the client certificate uh, against. This is just a matter of. Uh, configuring the back end, uh, the front end, I'm sorry, to configure the front end with the right parameters um, to check this. So it's it, it's very similar to enabling SSL on, uh, on on the front end, except that you're basically specifying a certificate for validating the client. And then there are many options you can you can you can check because then you can um, get more information about this client certificate, for example, uh, well, I don't have an example right now, but there are many parameters in the certificate that you can pull from uh, your um, your front end, and then you can create ACLs to redirect uh, on the, to the proper back end, or maybe just deny access depending on on uh, the client certificate parameters. Okay, we have time for one last question. So you mentioned how HA proxy can be used for capacity planning. Are there certain statistics that can uh, that can help out with doing that? Uh, Gurpreet, you yes. want to take that one? So, sure, sure, sure. So, so you know, when, when we are looking at performance and scalability, then what we are talking about is, okay, what are the service statistics? We have to look at the list of services which we are providing right, uh, through HA proxy, through Nuage Utility Host. Uh, see, what, what we have done here is that we have built the Nuage Utility Host on top of HA proxy, but we have built some added utility services and functions there. Now, those services and functions, we can collect the stats for all those services from the HA proxy, the interfaces and the APIs, which, what HA proxy provides. And we can take that information to decide that, okay, is this service, I mean, can we scale more based on the resources which we have allocated to that particular instance of the utility host or the HA proxy? And when we see, when we have some monitoring capabilities in place and we are gathering those statistics, we can decide that, okay, do we need to allocate more resources, infrastructure resources to this particular NUH or utility host instance. If not, then it's great. If we need to allocate more resources, we can do that. That is vertical scaling, right? We, we, we are impre impre increasing the number of resource, amount of resources. Now we could also do horizontal scaling. We, we can have multiple instances of HG proxy or NUH, and, and that way we can provide that scaling capability as well. Once you have that monitoring capability in place, you can make those decisions, right? You, you, can, you can set some thresholds where you say, if you have my resource users goes beyond a certain point, I can build some automation around it. I can do some auto scaling of the NUH VMs, right? Or the Azure proxy instances as well. And, and that way I can do some of my capacity planning. Now. There are some obviously uh, numbers, scaling numbers, which we do publish on how many um, SD-WAN network endpoints one NUH instance can support, right? So, so, so we, we can take those numbers and we, then we can do our, plan, our capacity planning exercise around that. 
Yep. Makes sense. Great gentlemen. Thank you so much for your talk and for joining us here for the live Q and a, we really appreciate you participating and we hope you enjoy the remainder of the conference. Thank you so much, gentlemen. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks so much.